come up here and share with you guys just uh, something that's been on my heart. Um, just a little bit about what I've learned these past four years and um, how AIA has really impacted my life. Um, but before I begin, I just want to give you guys a little background on my story. Um, I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior when I was a junior in high school. I'd like to say it has been smooth sailing after that moment, but I'm here to tell you that it's the farthest from it. Um, I still had not quite understood what a relationship with Jesus looked like, but I was excited to learn. Um, when I came to college, I was excited to get plugged in with AI and learn more about what life with Jesus looked like, and that's where my personal roller coaster began. So, we all go through seasons. Um, we go through seasons growing up uh, in elementary school, middle and high school, um, and now for all of us here, we're in a season of college. Some may be still close to home, um, but some may be far away from home. Um, I personally am far from home. Like you said, I'm from Houston, Texas, and sometimes I wonder why I chose a place that can't decide what season it wants to be. <laughs> anyway. Our, <laughs> our education goes through seasons, um, our sport goes through seasons, and relationships do too. Um, so while we go through many seasons in life, we also go through a season um, in our spiritual life. And my personal walk has had many low points, where I drifted very far from God and felt so far away. A lot of these happen because of my pursuit of the things of this world. Um, I want to control my life and that, that I could find happiness um, by seeking what the college life had to offer. I sat after partying, um, seeking attention from guys, and I tried to fill a void that always seemed to be draining out. Because I was still trying to get plugged in with ministry, I thought that this double life could really work out for me. Um, <coughs> I wanted to fit in with the crowd, um, and I knew I had Jesus in my life, but I was not letting him work in my life as my heavenly father, um, the way he intended it to be for me, his precious child. So the cool thing is that even during the times that I was not faithful to the Lord, um, God has always been so faithful, and he never left my side. So um, on the first slide, so 2 Timothy 2.13, if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. So during my sophomore year, I had gone through, through a really low point in my life. The summer before, I went on a trip with, um, to Kelly's Island with Athletes in Action, and I um, learned so much about who I was in Christ and really kickstarted my relationship with him. But coming back to school, that excitement faded, um, and I went to this double life habit again. I drifted far from God, but a part of me just didn't care. Um, I was in a relationship that also uh, led me further away from God, um, but I was blinded by it. Um, so January comes around, and our season just began, and I um, break my hand after the first meet of the season, I need and I needed surgery. So um, gymnastics was gone, my heart was broken, and I felt distant from the Lord. It was tough. But going back to 2 Timothy 2.13, um, this time in my life is where I experienced this so personally. I was in a slump for quite some time after these events, and I was having trouble accepting the grace from God. But I felt like I had been so unfaithful to him and knew it was my fault. I felt distant from the Lord. But he showed me it didn't matter. It didn't matter how far I strayed from him, the things I had done, and nothing mattered because he loved me anyway. This feeling literally swept my tears away um, one evening after having one of my regular crying sessions, um, and that triggered, triggered something in me. I felt his presence. And I felt his love, and I knew it was time to let him restore, to let him restore my life back to him. And day after day, he kept healing me, kept working in my heart, and kept telling me that he loves me. So if any of you guys may be in a situation similar to that, or if you're just struggling to feel the presence of God, I hope this truth encourages you that it is God who is the faithful one, and that's just the essence of who he is. And we can do nothing to change that about him. So this low point was so pivotal in my spiritual walk, and now looking back at it, it allowed me to learn a better understanding of what it means to be 100% justified in Christ. So to be justified means to be declared not guilty, but righteous in God's sight. So even though we are not righteous, he gives us his righteousness when we put our faith in Jesus. And the idea of being justified is spoken a lot throughout the Bible, 
but I just want to touch on two verses here. The first one um, is Romans 3, 23, 23 to 24. Um, it says, For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God freely and graciously declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. And then second, Galatians 2, 16. Yet we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ, not by obeying the law. And we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we may, might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law. For no, for no one will ever be made right with God by obeying the law. So the moment we put our faith in Jesus, God declares us not guilty, and we are justified at that moment. And this is just a one-time thing. For those who have put their faith in Jesus, he has taken their sins away and gave it to Jesus. And at the same moment, God gives Jesus his righteousness and his sinlessness to us as a free gift. So not only does he take away our sins, the past, present, and future, we're also given his unlimited amount of righteousness. The key thing is that we take no part in this incredible gift. As seen in these verses, it says God freely and graciously declares us righteous, and it's by our faith. We can't ever match up based on our performance. God's performance through his son, Jesus Christ, is the only thing that matters. So even though I did not live up to the standards of God, I could approach him because it wasn't what I had done that mattered. It was, about, it was all about what he did. I could still draw near to him because how God sees me is not based on my performance, but based on what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross. And again, no matter what I did, how far I drifted away, nothing and no one could take away the security I had in Jesus Christ the, mo the moment I was justified. And because it's about what he did. So even today, let's say I have what you would call a solid and good Christian day. I wake up, I spend so much time in prayer in the Bible, um, I share Jesus with 10 different people, I go help out at a charity, um, you name it, list like the performances, the good deeds are just on and on. Um, but God does not see me as any more righteous than he did before. It's because he sees Jesus' as righteousness, not mine. I am and always will be a 10 in his eyes and that is the most comforting feeling ever. So now while we are justified when we accept Jesus Christ into our lives, we are constantly being sanctified. So to be sanctified means to be a set apart for God, to be made holy through conforming to the image of his son. So as you can see, 2 Corinthians 3, 8, and the Lord who is the spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. So as we go through life, we are being transformed into his image, and sanctification is a work of God's grace. While justification occurs once at the moment of salvation, when we accept Jesus Christ into our heart, sanctification is a process. It can be a messy process, but it's a glorious one, as God continues to change our hearts into his image and make his will for us even clearer. When we accept Jesus into our lives, the Holy Spirit, the living God, comes into our heart and lives within us. This spirit then transforms us into his glorious image. So one thing that God really changed um, in my heart over these past four years uh, was how I viewed my gymnastics performance. Coming into college, I quickly learned that my performance did not match up to my expectations. I expected to uh, be doing all four events you know anything about gymnastics, there's four bars, beam, floor, and vault, um, getting the top scores and contributing to the team in all aspects. Um, due to injuries, like my hand I had mentioned earlier, and other circumstances, this did not happen and disappointment came in. I also was in constant pursuit of affirmation from my coaches, my teammates, and wanted to meet their expectations as well. It really touched on my insecurity of people pleasing. If I performed better, I would be seen more highly in people's eyes, and all I wanted to do was make them happy. I didn't get what God really intended for me just yet. <coughs> but over the years, God started to show me that he was my only audience, that my worth was not based on my performance and, or what others thought of me, and that even though I may not have gotten a perfect 10 on my gymnastics routines, 
Jesus was always there holding up a tent for my performance, and that was enough. So if you know me, um, you know I love people. I, I cherish relationships so much in my life, and that includes relationships with my teammates. While my level of performance was not what I expected, God changed my heart, in which I started to value relationships with my teammates more than I valued my performance in the gym. I wanted to just love my teammates. I wanted to build relationships with them, and I wanted to be someone that could care for them and show them God's love. Now, that didn't take away from working hard in the gym and trying to be the best gymnast that I could be, but my motivation to come to practice every day, endure the early mornings and um, the circuits that just seemed never ending, <laughs> that my motivation changed. I'm the first to say that I wasn't perfect at this. But with knowing the bigger purpose, the nailing routine changed how I viewed going to practice and how I viewed competing. I saw more meaning behind it instead of just stri living, striving for a performance. So last week on, uh, on my way to AIA, um, just a cool story, I was reflecting on my gymnastics career being over. Um, memories flashed in my head, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, and a lot of them were just hard times. But I heard God speak to my heart so clearly and say, well done, you have fought the good fight. And I knew that the perseverance was worth it. I developed relationships with girls that I will forever call my family, and I knew that my purpose of being on the gymnastics team was to make God's glory known and to love my teammates. So um, the last verse I just want to uh, talk about is Ephesians 3.20. Um, it's now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to do infinitely more than we might ask or think. I didn't know any of the plans God had for me when I came to Ohio State four years ago. And things were a lot different than the expectations I had for myself. But thank God that he is the one that is in control of my life because he exceeded all of my expectations. Through his mighty power at work within me, he showed me a different and higher purpose in my sport. And that is with anything in our lives. God has an incredible plan for us all. If we give him the chance to, chance to come into our hearts, he has the chance to transform us into who he wants us to be and accomplish infinitely more in our lives than we can plan on our own. So, like I mentioned earlier, um, sanctification, it's a process. This whole Christian life, it's a process. A hard but worthwhile one. Full of many different seasons and highs and lows. And not only that, but being a student athlete is hard. And let's just say it, life is hard. <laughs> um, and what I found is that you can't do this life alone. You need encouragement, people to speak truth into your life, God's word, and the super cool thing is that I found here, this here at AIA. And just like Caitlin touched on, community is so important. There are people here that can relate to you on the hardships of sport, and especially in regards to tackling the Christian life. I have learned so much from being a part of this ministry, and I'm so thankful that Athletes in Action gave me a supportive environment to be myself, to screw up, to not be faithful enough, and to learn so much about my faith, how to glorify God in gymnastics, and how even through it all, God is the one that is faithful and always will be. This ministry is so dear to my heart and has impacted my life, and I hope you guys just take the every opportunity to get plugged in and have the chance to see how beautiful and pur purposeful life of Jesus Christ is. Thanks.